Today I am watching the Patreon sponsored 1979 film Norma Ray. I've been told it's based on a true story and I believe it stars Sally Field. I'm not 100% sure. I really enjoy Sally Field's performance so I hope she's in this. I recently watched her in Smokey and the Bandit. You can check out that reaction video on my channel as well. I don't know the plot. I don't know any other cast members. I'm very curious to see what this true story is all about and if you want to sponsor a video be sure to join Patreon. The link is below. If you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch please comment below as well and if you want to have a say in what movies or tv shows I watch be sure to join patreon and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content is he so it goes yes Sally Field I'm so excited flows and that name sounds familiar as well. And maybe Bo Bridges? Really? Okay. I really like this intro. Nobody really takes the time to do this kind of intro anymore. So yeah, I'm very excited. And maybe Are these actual photos of Sally Field? It looks like her. Bit better. I love it when they do that. If they need like childhood photos, they actually use like that actor's photos instead of trying to Photoshop them. Obviously this would have been for Photoshop. That is very loud. Like I couldn't imagine spending eight hours a day or more. Oh, I feel like they're nowadays they're probably nowadays. I'm not a thousand. I feel like if this, you know, conditions were in current times, they would have that wear headphones or something that was very loud. Mama! Mama! Mama, come on. Oh no, no, something's wrong. Something's very wrong. Her and her mom work at the same factory. I say she doesn't hear you right now. Now you know that happens, Norma Ray. It happens. Well, being around those loud machines all the time. No kidding. Oh, she's got earplugs at least. Come on, Mama. They don't care anything about you. I'm guessing that's the doctor that the factory would employ. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no wonder you lose your freaking hearing. That place is insanely loud. There's one soaking from breakfast. That's got company. Ha! Ah, I like her style. Yeah, I'm very curious to find out who the real Norma Ray was. Uh, before I had a chance to adjust my crotch, the chief of police was on me saying, Who are you? I don't know you. What the hell are you doing here? Small town. So I told him. I was a labor organizer. Oh, okay. I thought it was a reporter, maybe. The Henley Textile Mill. Oh. Communists are agitators or crooks or Jews are all four rolled together. Every time you people... Not a big fan of unions. It's a frame. And when did you have your last cost of living raise? I haven't had that. With all due respect. A dollar thirty-three a frame? Makes you a bit of a schlemiel. I don't think it's gonna take kindly to that. You have a name. You're underpaid. You're overworked. At the very least. And you're right up to your tonsils. That, that's one way to put it. And you get paid by the frame, not the hour? What if it takes you three hours to make a frame? I don't know. Oh my gosh. That seems insanely low. I know this would have been 1978, but that seems insanely low. For a poke, and then you go on home, and you're dumping me. I thought she was gonna punch him, to be honest. Oh my god. Please never see him again. Good morning. Thank you. Here you go. Read this when you have a chance on your brain. I'm guessing they tried to unionize at some point, and obviously it went bad because... Usually unions help the worker, usually, so for them to be so against it, I feel like there was some scare tactics involved and anybody who thought about it, they fired or something, so now everybody's scared. America, want to read this when you have a chance on your break? We'll read this on and it sounds like this factory is the only thing that employs this entire town, so... Asshole. I'm very curious if they shot in like an actual, this looks like an actual functioning textile. I already told him I wouldn't go out to dinner with it. What's the word now? <laughs> Make your breakfast yeah, like it looks like an actual textile factory. So comment below, did they film in like a functioning one? Give us a Kotex pad machine. Do it, now shut up. <laughs> Seems pretty simple. Yeah. 
how far and for how much. Well, she's like, nothing's for free. Ain't gonna make me any friends. It'll make you another dollar and a half an hour. Is that all? Spot checking, I'm guessing, is going around and checking people's work. And it's they're just doing it so she stops complaining, basically. And her parents work there. Like, she has to spot check her parents and she has to, like, time them to see if they're working fast enough. That's horrible. I think you better try to speed it up some if you can. I'm going as fast as I can. Yeah. Oh, God, that's horrible. How's Craig? Lost a tooth. Is this her kid's dad, I'm guessing? I wonder what this would have been like to watch in the theaters and just hear this sound constantly. It seems like she's worked here for a while and like knows these people and is now responsible for tattling on them, basically. That would probably be really soft, but also itchy. You used to stand behind the cash register yeah. to give everybody the wrong change. Oh. It's all right. It's all wrong, but it's all right. <laughs> when I do, I just wash down the bear, see? Short term solution, but you know, it probably helps a little bit. Johnny Cash. And I think it was Dolly Parton playing before. He was drunk, and he got in a fight, and he broke a beer bottle. Oh my gosh. You know, I just, I really just wanted to see him. And my daddy wouldn't let me. That's awful. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I took your advice. Got it down to two syllables. One's better. Just <laughs> when you have a chance, please. He's very determined, this guy, that's for sure. I'm all right. Yeah, I feel like she's gonna get in trouble for being seen talking to the union worker. Norma, your family's been with this mill a long time. She's like, I'd rather, you know, have a lower pay and have, you know, people at work that are my friends than uh, be hated by everyone. So she's back to weaving. It definitely feels like solidarity is very important. And if, you know, you're part of this big Horrible factory, obviously. It seems like a terrible place to work, but. Hey. Hey. Oh my. Well, then, everybody hop in. <laughs> okay. Team, but things that kind of slipped and slid. You look all right to me. Oh my. Well, I'll take you where it's dark. I've been there. <laughs> I turn my paycheck over the minute I get it. That's every Friday. And I come straight home from work. This is the spiel. This is his, like, you should date me. It's been a long time between offers. He doesn't seem like an overcomplicated man. And now by the authority. All right, getting married. Lives and your substance. And in which your children and their children will spend their lives. Yeah, it just goes around. Like, every generation works there. But it comes from Ruben Wachowski. Not unless you make it happen. Yeah, and I don't think they realize that, like, the workers actually have the power. That you can possibly give me, uh, licking stamps, stuffing envelopes, typing with two fingers, anything. <laughs> I'll show up. All right, thanks. Yeah, like, they know it's horrible. They just, I think it's a big thing to want to change it, and, like, it would be a big change, and if they lose their jobs, it doesn't sound like there's any other options for them, so... That's not really an option, you know, like they have to work, so. Every bulletin board in the mills at least once a week to verify in person that its notices are not being stripped off. In case you put up a notice for a union and they're taking it off the board. Thank you. And like no condition air conditioning either, like everybody's already got sweat on their backs, like it just must be insanely hot in there. Quick for you or something. I did my wedding when I was in the army. I'm not in the army now. <laughs> Come on, the bulletin board's over here. Bulletin board's over here. He's not even allowed to talk to people while he's there, and he's representing the union. Like, come on, man. Oh, yeah. Will Chamberlain on stilts could read. <laughs> oh man. 
they put it on the board, but I'm guessing they put it at an insane height where nobody can see it. This is his like one thing. He's like, you're supposed to put my notice up on the bulletin board. And I guarantee you, as soon as he leaves, they're going to put it back up. Yeah, you just keep it up. I ain't violating the law. You're violating the law now, baby. Man, Ruben is a bulldog. And he has to be. Like, all these guys are just making his life so much more complicated than it needs to be. The other bulletin board. In the weaving room. You want to show it to Yes, me? hell yeah. He had to get a court order to check the bulletin board. And no one's even been in this factory in 10 years. He's been in here for, what, 10 minutes and is already sweating through his shirt? Like, it's got to be a freaking sauna in there. Nice. This is their bulletin board behind a cardboard box and piles of cloth. We could debate this all night. Here. Sign. This is it. She's signing the union card. I feel like she seems like the type of character that if she does it, everybody else will follow suit. Like, I feel like she's got a good voice for what's happening at the factory. You cool everything! I can't imagine the logistics of trying to work within a functioning factory. I always feel like I'm yelling and then it cuts to like a quiet scene. We're gonna miss your voice in the choir, Norma. She just got kicked out of the church for suggesting that a union. Yeah, exactly. She's like, we'll go somewhere else then. Bye. See you right in. Wash my windows on Saturday. You shouldn't have any trouble. She's like, I know you're gonna be spying on me. So here's a quick rundown of all the things I'll be doing. It's definitely giving me like Aaron Brockovich vibes, and I know Aaron Brockovich came up much later, but this like woman fighting this corporation. Try that. I dropped him and broke my goddamn foot. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Is she uh, flirting with Ruben here? What are we doing? Jeans. I'm going around uh, without altogether. Sonny's uh, obviously not happy with this union work. She's got raw chicken and lettuce and putting it in the pot. Oh, Norma Ray. So like, here you go. You complain that I'm not doing enough for you? Yeah, here's your laundry. You got laundry. God forbid he does his own laundry. Hey, Doris, Melissa, now, Doris, I want you to come on down to go chair, bring your peanut butter pie. Yeah, Norma's like full into union mode. She's like, everybody, you know, knows me. Everybody likes me. So uh, we're going to do this thing. Hey, man, what's happened? Nobody showed up at the meeting. They got us on a stretch out. What does that mean? Yeah, nobody showed up to the union meeting. Twice as much work. In half the time. Oh, my gosh. Just stand there for a minute. Because they were going to union meetings. They change their hours and their schedule. Oh my gosh. What's wrong with it? Is he having a heart attack? Mom called them on me, Jimmy. I think I better go and lie down. Oh no. Y'all hang on, Vernon. Your break is coming up. Yeah, I know you're injured, but you know, you don't have a break for 15 minutes, so uh, we're going to milk you for those 15 minutes until. Uh... Oh my gosh, this poor guy. Can't even feel his arm anymore from lifting all this heavy stuff. <gasps> yeah, he was probably having a heart attack. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't even let him go lie down. Frick. Oh my gosh. And he was literally just talking to that guy. Literally died on the job because they overworked him so much. Hopefully that like inspires them to get some change if people are literally dying on the job. What did I do? I only said what was true. Out. Yeah, she's putting in crazy days at the factory and then coming to help this union stuff like after that. And clearly she's exhausted, burnt out. And also her dad just died. They say she's made a porno movie with a local police officer. Oh my. Very explicit. Oh my, Norma Ray. The lady has an illegitimate child. She slept around. Now they're bringing her reputation into things? Oh my gosh. You think she ought to die? Now you make it stick if you can't get the hell out of here. Just get the hell out of here anyway. 
Yeah, he's like, Norma's been working her butt off this entire time. If you're gonna use her past against her, then get out of here. He's like, I don't care what she does. Like, she's here constantly. Like, oh my gosh. And now they're starting rumors about her. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. What? Stop. What started this? They put up a letter. They're telling the whites that the blacks are going to take over the union. They're going to run. Oh my god. Did you get caught? I went back next week for curlers. And you know how to do it, kid. Okay. They're just using this, like, racial segregation to just fuel even more hate against the union. They're like, well, you know, if you lose your job, someone of, you know, a different race is just going to take it over. And now they're starting fights. And oh my gosh. So horrible. And at least Ruben says, you know, they can get legal action if she can memorize it and copy it word for word. So. And toilet paper. <laughs> Perfect. That'll work. You want to get massage? You go to the massage parlor. Either we get beat or we don't get beat. Come on. He's like, yeah, we need to fight twice as hard. Like, they're obviously not following the rules. Why can't she copy it? Yeah. This letter. It's my break time, but I'm going to take down every word of this letter. They can put it on the bulletin board, but they can't let her write it down. Why did you make those personal phone calls on company time? Literally every manager on the entire floor is in the office with her, like, oh my gosh. You phone your husband, you come over and tell him to fetch you. I want you out of here right quick. They're gonna fire her for copying a letter. Seriously? I think they just started more trouble. Like, if she's fired, they're just gonna bring down even more trouble on them. There's no way they can do that. Like, that's insane. And through like security too. She's literally like, yelling at the top of her lungs because it's so loud. She's very determined. I love it. She's like, I'm not going anywhere. You want to fire me? You're going to pull me out of here. Yes! She's like, you can't hear me, it's so loud, so here's my sign. Yes, she's like, if we all do it, they can't fire us all. Good for you, Norma Ray. so proud. And everybody's just like admiring her, aww. She's turning off their machines? Yes! I love it! Yes! They're going on strike. Time for some changes in this crap hole. That machine looks insanely dangerous also. Like, limbs will be lost. Yeah, they're like, forget this. We're not working anymore if you're firing her. Yes, come on, everybody! Yeah, everybody's just standing in solidarity and it's slowly getting quieter and quieter. Like, you hear that sound? That's the sound of you losing money because you treat us like crap. I don't know if I want to get in the same car with you and nobody else. What a jerk. And literally, like, every manager, security, police escorting her off the floor. That's a police car, you're taking me to jail! No! No! What are they arresting her for? Oh, God. Oh, God. She is kicking. Oh, God. Oh. How can they take her to jail? What? How is this possible? What are they arresting her for? holding up a cardboard sign. 38B, charge disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct? She was peacefully holding a sign. Oh my God, she wasn't disorderly until she found she was being arrested. Cheese and rice, this guy sucks. I saw a guy get blown to hell and back when he tried to start up his car in the morning. Oh my God, that's horrible. I want life to be better for you than it is for me. 
Aw, yeah, she clearly cares about her kids a lot. I didn't want that. I didn't want her to be front runner. Yeah, he's like, I want her to stay exactly who she was. I didn't want her to, you know, start to grow and want better things. They're counting up all the people who voted for a union? Yeah, oh man, there was 8,000 people that worked there? That's crazy. Or 800, 800, sorry. I'm hoping, like, with Norma Ray's, you know, activism and everybody kind of, you know, being sick of how things are and wanting a change that they would vote yes. And especially seeing, like, how the management is treating everybody and, like, their only goal is obviously profits and they're not really concerned about human beings, so... They need to get air conditioning so badly. <laughs> She's literally passing out because it's so hot. Like, ugh. Family company against the union, 373. How many for? 373 against. Count for the union, 400. Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh. That's close. That's literally like almost half exactly. Oh my gosh. It wasn't like a landslide win. Cheese and rice. Oh, my heart. I was like, she went through all this. If they don't get it, it would be heartbreaking. Oh, my gosh. Finally! <laughs> and what are all the people who voted against gonna do? Are they gonna quit? Or are they gonna realize that maybe a union could help them? <laughs> all the managers are like, well, crap. Now we actually have to, you know, treat people like humans and not workhorses. She must be so proud, like, going through all of this, you know, sticking your neck out there, you know, getting fired, obviously, as well, and, like, all the hours spent in. You did. Nobody can do anything for you. <laughs> uh, best wishes uh, don't seem hardly enough. I, I'd like to yeah, he wouldn't have been able to do this without her. Aww. I also enjoyed very much looking at your shining hair. <laughs> okay, it's, it's took a turn. Norma, what I've had from you has been sumptuous. Aww, such a heartfelt goodbye, these two. The child of a working man. And yeah, closing it out with the same song we had at the intro as well. He knows his Bye, Ruben. Yeah, I'm very curious to look up and find out more about this true story and uh, all those details. And it goes like it goes. I was kind of hoping for like those text screens that are like... Norma Ray, blah, 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 10 years later, whatever, Ruben, blah, 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 like that kind of like closing epilogue. I, like, I can still look it up, but uh, it would have been nice to have here. So that was my first time watching the Patreon-sponsored 1979 film Norma Ray. I really enjoyed it. Sally Field's performance was amazing. I've mostly seen her in comedies or movies with like a comedic element, and I feel like her personality definitely had some like dry humor, but this was definitely more, you know, of a drama, and I'm very curious to find out more about the real life story and the fact that this story took place in 1978 and this came out in 19. 79. It's not like it was a true story, you know, that took place like 50 years after the events. I feel like this would have been very recent. So people who would have experienced this would have seen something on screen, you know, very recently, like a couple of years later, which I feel like would have just have further impacted all the work the real Norma Ray would have done and to see your kind of life's work up on the screen. It didn't say like based on a book or anything. So I'm not too sure if the real Norma Ray wrote a book or, you know, obviously her story was out there somewhere. Somewhere, and it said, you know, based on fictionalized versions. So maybe she wasn't even involved in the film process. I don't know anything about the real Norma Ray. So yeah, I'd be curious to find out if she was involved in this process, what that looks like. Sometimes they use the real person as like a consultant or they have a cameo or something like that. So yeah, I, I'm very excited to learn all those behind the scenes details. It definitely reminded me of Erin Brockovich, which is another movie about a single mom who's trying to get a better life for her kids. And I think underneath it all, that 
that was the core of this story. Norma Ray didn't want her kids to grow up living the same life that she was living as her parents. You know, both of her parents worked at the factory. I think it would have been safe to assume that her kids would have grown up and worked at that factory at some point. So she wanted to change that. And Aaron Brockovich, we see, you know, that character taking down a huge corporation. And obviously Norma Ray was fighting against, you know, trying to get this union up and running and fighting against the companies trying to stop that. I feel like Sally Field was Norma Ray. Like she just embodied that character so perfectly, so convincingly. Like I feel like if you'd only seen her in this role, you would think of her as that person, especially since it's based off like a real life character. And she was just so determined and was fighting so hard to get this done. Her and Ruben obviously working together. You know, I feel like Norma was putting in just as many long hours into working on union stuff as she was to working in the factory. And once she was on board, she was all in. Like she doesn't seem like the type of person that, you know, kind of half asses something. She was full in and spent every free moment, I think, of her breaks, you know, handing out flyers, talking to people. And Ruben really needed that. Like Ruben didn't have access to that stuff. He needed someone on the inside and someone who was local who could talk to these people and get them to, you know, see how things could be better. It's terrifying to think that people were working in such horrible conditions in the 70s. Like that's, you know, a while ago, but not that long ago at the same time. So yeah, it's crazy to think that people, I imagine those would have been 12, 14 hour shifts. And if they're cutting your shifts, you know, you work three days a week and it seemed like it was, you know, the only place of employment in this town other than Sunny had a job at the gas station, but the gas station can't employ, you know, 800 people, which the factory did. So, you know, do you risk losing your job and try and get something better, which I'm glad they ultimately, you know, took that chance, but it was just such an endearing, you know, you wanted them to succeed. You wanted them to come together. You wanted these people to have a better life. And again, the fact that it's based on, you know, true events and these people were, you know, dealing with this and felt like they had nowhere to go basically. And Ruben says like, hey, nobody's even been in here in 10 years. Like the management and the company obviously thought they would never be questioned. They had total control over everything and that they could treat people as horribly as they wanted and nobody would do anything about it. And obviously we saw that until Norma Ray decided to very publicly, you know, stand up on her desk with that union sign and just such a great scene to see everybody in solidarity with her, you know, shutting off their machines and being like, you know what, like we've had enough. Like if we all, you know, work together, we have power in numbers basically, especially in a town that small. I don't know if they said the state or the town that they were in. It did say filmed on location in Alabama. So maybe that's where this actually took place. And to be working in those conditions, even at the beginning of the movie, we see Norma get promoted just because she keeps complaining and they just don't want to listen to her. So they give her a promotion just to shut her up basically. And then all of her friends, you know, aren't really her friends anymore because she's kind of become a supervisor, I'm guessing. It was a spot checker. And she decides, you know what, I'd rather make less money and actually, you know, have friends at work. And even she says like, well, just give me the things I'm asking for. Like it didn't sound like she was asking for anything crazy. It was like more breaks. I don't know how many breaks they got. I'm hoping it was, you know, at least a lunch break or something. But again, I'm assuming they were working crazy long hours. And Norma Ray's dad said he was making $1.33 per flat, I believe is the term he used. Um, and yeah, I don't know what that would equate to today. Comment below and let me know. It seems very low because it's $1.33, but that just could be compared to modern standards. I'm not too sure what that would actually be uh, in, you know, 2022, what that would sound like. And the fact that it wasn't an hourly wage, it was per like how much you produce. So you're obviously motivated to produce more because then you get paid more, but I don't know how much time it takes to make one of those things. Like they're definitely motivated by just production. They're like, the faster you work, the more you could earn. But obviously then safety comes into play and being a human being. And like, if you need a bathroom break or anything like that, you're more motivated to stay and work when they pay you that way, which is crazy. And obviously that was part of what they wanted to change as well. Definitely an underdog story, you know, power to the people and them all coming together and, you know, being a solid unit. And Norma Ray couldn't have done this on her own. Ruben couldn't have done this on their own. They needed to work together to get people to vote yes on this to get a union and I wish they would have kind of had that like wrap up epilogue text at the end. I'll have to do some research now that I finished watching it. It would have been nice to see like what 
benefits they were actually getting now. Like, obviously, the union would have, you know, instituted more regular work hours, I'm hoping, and regular pay and maybe benefits and all of those things. It still would have been nice to see, like, a comparison of how it was before to how it is now. It'll definitely be better, but I think it would have just even been more, you know, to have that dramatic effect. I'm sure there are tons of towns just like the one where, you know, this film takes place in where people were dealing with this similar thing and maybe it inspired them to start unions. I'm not too sure. I feel like this would have been a very powerful film to see at the time when it came out. It was still powerful to watch now and just to see this, you know, one woman's determination and risking everything she has. Basically, her husband doesn't approve of it. You know, she doesn't see her kids. She's working crazy hours. Her dad dies, you know, on the job of a heart attack, I'm guessing. And she just keeps going, is so motivated and just won't give up. And I think they were hoping she would give up. I think they were hoping that she would, you know, stop, get burnt out, get exhausted and just quit and leave them alone. And luckily for everybody that did not happen, she was full on spearheading this campaign and eventually loses her job because of it, gets arrested for disorderly conduct. And it was just the whole town was set against her. Basically, they're starting up all these horrible rumors about her and using her past against her and saying, you know, she's not a very credible character because of things that have happened and just doing anything possible to make her seem like someone you shouldn't trust and because she's associated with this union now and even she's like I'll step down if you know it's going to affect them but she's such a powerful voice at the same time it was just so impressive to see her in this role as this character just you know taking down it was you know David versus Goliath she's trying to take down this huge corporation that's had control for a very very long time I really enjoyed the entire cast performance everybody was great it was a relatively you know small cast other than everybody in the factory obviously and all of those extras but obviously Norma Ray was our main character and the summer was basically the timeline for this movie so a couple of months I don't know if that's actually what happened in real life maybe it took longer I loved Ruben and Norma Ray together I thought maybe something romantic would happen there it both sounded like obviously Norma was married and Ruben had a girlfriend back in New York but I definitely feel like they obviously got along and maybe you know different timing something would have happened but they definitely had a very strong partnership and a very strong friendship and it was so sad to see them say goodbye at the end I don't know if they ever kept in touch again I'll have to look that up now that I finished watching and see like hopefully you know this wasn't the end of their friendship I feel like this would be such a bonding experience for them and it was so great to see the two of them on screen together I love the intro sequence where we have you know really getting to know the factory and those like b-roll shots of everything working and all the machines and then having those photos of Norma Ray I'm assuming of actual photos of Sally Field when she was younger and that was great just really setting up the character and setting up the entire movie basically we've got the factory and Norma Ray and you know her kids and her life and that's obviously what this movie focused heavily on I feel like they filmed in an actual functioning textile factory I don't know what factories are still like that today I've never been inside a textile factory but just from what I saw it looked very realistic and I don't know if they would put the expense in trying to replicate it all the machines seemed to be working like there was actual textiles being created and it was very loud and I couldn't imagine what that would be like filming that also working there would be insane everything would be so loud even we saw Norma Ray's mom was losing her hearing and everybody's got those you know earplugs around their neck so you've got earplugs in for your entire shift because it's so loud and you know you're trying your best to prevent hearing damage but I feel like it would be inevitable at some point and trying to film in a working factory I feel like it was twofold and the fact that it really helped create this atmosphere of you felt like you were there you really felt like you were on the floor surrounded by these machines and the experience and you know it'd be like filming outside and be like okay why don't we hear any birds or anything like you need that noise and you need that ambience to put you in the experience but also logistically trying to film in that I feel like would have been a nightmare just because it's so loud and the few scenes we did have where Norma Ray was talking I feel like they strategically placed was like in an office behind a closed door and even that I still feel like they were like yelling at each other because it was so loud I couldn't imagine the poor sound guy you know trying to film in that and just being like I don't I can't hear anything I hear the machines and how do you like separate those sounds so yeah even watching it would go from like very very loud to okay we're you know back to a quieter scene and then very very loud again but I think that's part of it that's normal Ray's world is having this crazy loud factory that was insanely hot nobody had any air conditioning or anything even at the end we have that poor girl fainting because it's so hot in there the soundtrack was limited but I feel like it was very effective we have that song at the beginning and I don't know if it was written specifically for the movie 
movie. I'd never heard it before, but it was definitely all about, you know, the working class. And then I feel like that scene we had at the bar, there was Johnny Cash and I believe Dolly Parton as well on the uh, jukebox. And I feel like those songs and that style of music is something that people in this town would have listened to. So, you know, it makes sense that that would be on the jukebox at the bar and people would be requesting it and having that song play at the intro and the end, I think were just perfect bookends, you know, to capture this. Although the story is obviously focused on Norma Ray, I think Ruben is just as big of a fighter and maybe he didn't get to, you know, he wasn't on the floor as much because he obviously didn't work in the factory, but he's the one going in and demanding everything's on the bulletin board. He had to get a warrant just to even be doing that. Like that's insane. Both sides definitely fought insanely hard for their cause and obviously they're very opposing causes. The fact that they've have, you know, those textiles covering the bulletin board and boxes and stuff. It's like, from what it sounds like, these are the only two places where employees can get information. It didn't seem like there was a staff room or anything, like they're all having their breaks outside and probably also to cool down. The two places that they have to access information, you've blocked one entirely and then you put the union paper as as high as it could go like it wasn't even in the frame so like they make reference to Wilt Chamberlain who is a famous basketball player and like he would be the only one who could read it I don't remember how tall he is I know he's a basketball player that was the joke is like you he only he could read it because no one at normal eye level would be able to see that and that's they're like well we'll put it up but you know we'll put it in an impossible place because they obviously didn't want a union obviously the company and the managers see this union coming in as a loss in their wages and a loss you know in their revenue so so they're very against it, but also they need the workers there to earn revenue. So yeah, it definitely goes hand in hand. And luckily the workers were finally able to win the vote. And it sounds like they won by a relatively small margin. Like it seems like it was split almost half and half. I don't know if the people who had opposed it were just afraid they would get fired if this didn't go and they just wanted to, you know, be safe and protect their jobs or what their reservations were or they believed all these rumors, who knows, and just didn't want to be involved with it if they'll keep working there now that this thing is actually passed and the fact that this company you know used racial segregation to try and you know fuel this union and just use that as a way to get people to say no to it saying we'll replace your role with someone of a different skin color because they just want to pin them against each other and they know it's an easy thing it definitely sounds like not only was Norma Ray dealing with union and the backlash that was coming from that but also racism and you know she was inviting people over to her house and her neighbors watching and judging them because of their skin color and judging them because she's bringing over black people to her house. And, and I just love how Norma Ray walks over there and she's like, well, I cleaned the window so you're gonna spy on me. You'll have a good view at least and just doesn't give a crap what anybody thinks and is just so focused on her goal and is so determined to accomplish this and doesn't wanna waste time with people who are only interested in gossip. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought Sally Field's performance was amazing. I'm very excited excited to learn more about the real Norma Ray and learn all those behind the scenes pieces and what was true in the movie, what was true in real life. Again, I've never heard of Norma Ray or the real her, so I don't know what to compare. I don't know what the movie embellished and what was actually true, so I'm very curious to find out more about that. But the fact that it's a true story and I'm assuming, you know, this woman starting up a union is the basics of what's true. I'm hoping they didn't change that from real life. Such a great performance, such an interesting story, and I feel like a story that a lot of people would be able to relate to, especially given, you know, the time this came out. Like I said, if this was supposed to be placed only a year prior, it would have been very relevant. And I feel like, you know, workers' rights is something that people still struggle with today, maybe in a different sense, and maybe more real life unions started up after this. I'm not too sure. Like I said, I'm very curious to learn more about this. And just the story of this woman who, you know, is trying to build a better life for her kids and is working so hard to get all of this done for them. And it's just so determined and just, you know, unwavering in her goals and just doesn't let anything slow her down was just obviously very inspiring and just great to see Sally Field in this role. But thank you so much for sponsoring this Patreon video. If you want to sponsor a video, be sure to join Patreon. The link is below. And if you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Her and her mom work at the same factory. Sounds like this factory is the only thing that employs this entire town. And I don't think they realize that like the workers actually have the power. He had to get a court order to check the bulletin board. Literally died on the job because they overworked him so much. They're gonna fire her for copying a letter. She's literally like, yelling at the top of her lungs because it's so loud.